So hi everybody, it's uh, very great uh, that uh, so big audience here gathered in, in Odessa and that there is so many people interested in computer vision and machine learning are now in Ukraine and uh, doing interesting stuff. So I was not in Ukraine <laughs> recent years, I, I did PhD in, in uh, CDU, Czech Technical University in Prague and, and since then I'm kind of uh, somewhere around there. And uh, so this is one work I did uh, together with um, um, uh, guys from uh, Technical University in Graz. So I, I will talk about that. And um, this is the work that we will be presenting at the CVPR now in Miami that is in a few weeks. So you are getting it uh, sooner, you see, <laughs> you have a, a pre premium content. All right. Uh, okay, so I will not make any hiring and advertising. You see, the video was very strict on that, so I, I did not put the slides that we also hiring and such. And uh, in fact, in fact, they wanted us to, to 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 give the presentation in advance so that they can, you know, check and and um, censor any of the hiring content. <laughs> but I'm showing from my laptop. But there was will be no hiring in this. Uh, all right. Okay. So. I will tell you kind of, so the, the work is about um, doing the stereo reconstruction with uh, hybrid models that contain the convolutional neural networks and some optimization, discrete optimization methods. But I will start from uh, the basic uh, model that uh, does not contain the convolutional neural network yet. So let me do some pointing here. So this is the classical stereo setup. You have a, so you have a, two images on the input, and uh, it's assumed that they are rectified. That means uh, the corresponding point in the right image is on the same row of pixels, and you are looking for the displacement that is called uh, disparity in this case. And the output is something like this. This is a ground truth uh, disparity map color coded that for each pixel you want to know uh, how much it is displaced set to the matching pixel in the right. And uh, in more general context you can uh, look, so we can look at the stereo correspondence problem but in more general context also at uh, something like uh, dense matching that, uh, so here it's the optical flow problem that the car moves, there is no row to row correspondence and there are objects moving. And actually maybe it can be even more general that whenever you want to uh, somehow in your visual uh, system to match some images to the other images, so what uh, has moved where or what is matching to where. Right, and uh, now the, like the basic model for the stereo, let's look at the individual scan line in the image and let's see where the certain pixel can be matching to and it, it might be matching to these positions, so let us discretize these positions and calculate some costs, how well this local window match into these possible positions and this cost will be uh, assigned to the to these numbers to the possible labels so these are uh, the possible states where these pixel maps to and then what we want to say is that uh, two neighboring pixels here should not uh, uh, be mapped too far apart or if they do that should not occur very often so we have um, formalized this problem as um, finding the uh, configuration that for each pixel the possible disparity label uh, such that uh, you want to minimize the total sum of these local matching costs and uh, some penalty on the uh, uh, shape regularity that has here this form that a uh, small deviation uh, that means kind of smooth surface, uh, smooth depth changes penalizes, penal is penalized a little bit and uh, big jumps like object boundaries and uh, big uh, depth jumps are penalized uh, larger but then it does not depend uh, how much exactly is the jump. Okay, so that's a basic thing that you know you can solve it with dynamic programming very easily. And uh, now Okay, so this problem can be also visualized as uh, finding the path in this cost volume. So here is now color-coded the costs. 
And this cost can be something like sum of square differences of pixel colors or absolute differences of pixel colors. And actually people have engineered a lot of these um, costs to, be, to make them insensitive to the sampling of the pixels in images, insensitive to illumination changes, to make them adaptive and, and so on. And uh, we're going to replace this cost uh, a bit later on with the uh, CNN features. Um, right, okay, and now if you have uh, a full image, not only a single scanline, you want to make these solutions uh, coherent, that they should not be independent, so you're getting a discrete optimization problem that looks like this, that for each scanline you have this uh, problem that you've seen on, on, a, on, a, on a chain, but then they are also connected vertically also by the smoothness in the vertical direction. And um, now if you look at uh, minimizing such a problem over all possible configurations, it is NP-hard and uh, et cetera, et cetera. For example, if you want to look for approximate solutions in terms of approximation ratio, that is uh, hard as well. Uh, okay, so what we will be doing actually, we will lift uh, the methods that compute some solution for, for a scan line for the simple problem to solutions to the joint problem by this following technique. We take the original problem and decompose it into a sum of these horizontal and vertical chains. And um, uh, then we introduce these costs that can be transferred from the horizontal subproblem to the vertical subproblem and your task is to balance these costs such that the solution of this and this are consistent to each other. So the algorithm might look something like this. At the first iteration you have two solutions from this horizontal and vertical that are looking liney and inconsistent to each other. But then when you adjust this uh, Lagrange multipliers that are enforcing the consistency, uh, you eventually maybe get something that is closer. And uh, if you get the solutions that are actually matching, you know you have a guarantee that you solve the original uh, hard problem. Well, this does not happen often, but in practice uh, we do something like five iterations uh, towards that uh, to obtain a consistent solution. Right, so this is kind of a basic of uh, dual methods, and there would be many such methods doing that. And one of uh, the things uh, that I contributed to, to this development is a fast method to, to do something like that. So um, let's look. Um, so here is the slide. There is a state of the, there was a, there is a state of the art methods method for. Um, finding uh, such optimal uh, dual solution. And um, it is a sequential algorithm. Also, it can be parallelized to some extent. So people did that, implemented that in FPGA and so on. And um, okay, so, but it said that it's not fast enough. So there are very popular, there are these heuristics that are semi-global matching or more global matching. But uh, you see they are still have a lot of errors in, in, at least in this example. And uh, okay, so what uh, we developed is the something that I call dual minorized maximize technique. I will not tell uh, how it works. I just mentioned that, for example, let's look at this comparison here. So this is problem of the size 212 pixels uh, squared with 64 depth labels. And if you run the implementation of this from Vladimir Kolmogorov, it, um, let's say, takes three seconds but uh, then I could implement that with uh, using, you know, in the CPUs you have the vectorization intrinsics and uh, multiple cores. You can uh, make that faster, maybe five, six times faster. Uh, but uh, that's basically then you hit the memory bandwidth speed. And actually with the GPU uh, architecture, that is uh, something different. It's massively parallel. You want to create something like 30,000 or so parallel jobs to compute. 
so you need somewhat a different algorithm, but okay, we proposed something, and then in, in the GPU we had a maybe 70 times faster optimization. So that would be sufficient for run few iterations in kind of real time. And this is a c comparison in optimi maximizing the dual objective, uh, kind of the objective value versus time in the logarithmic scale. Right, so these are some results that we got. Uh, so there's still no CNNs in this. Uh, it's um, um, just to mention that for this size of the input, we could do discrete optimization in uh, like four iterations in 70 milliseconds on GPUs. And then we could, so the, because of the discretization, you have these artifacts that the depths are quantized. Uh, then uh, we could do some continuous post-processing to, 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 to make it more accurate. Right, so this is some example that is the motorcycle, or the kind of reconstruction that we got with that. And um, because it's near real time, uh, we can plug it in the integrating framework like this Kinect Fusion scene that you go around uh, with the camera and um, All right, okay, I'm lucky, it goes. So you go around with the camera and uh, we reconstruct the stereo on, on, on the fly and then we feed it to the volumetric uh, fusion that is done by Microsoft and to get some 3D reconstruction. This is a very crappy reconstruction, uh, so people nowadays can do much more accurate, but I'm not sure about the real timeness, so can they do it uh, at uh, the, the fast speed? Well, this was just a, a test example and, and also a nice illustration. All right, so now we go, we, let, let's look at how do we do this with uh, CNNs, I promised you. So this will be the hybrid inference model. We will use still discrete uh, inference procedures, but we will use the convolutional neural network features. And um, now the architecture of this stereo reconstruction will look like this. We have these two input images, and um, uh, for each of them, we will extract uh, CNN features. So per pixel, build a descriptor. And then these two will be compared in, instead of the plain colors as, as we did before. And uh, that will be put to this conditional random field to the discrete optimization. And also, so here we will do something more. We will uh, also model the smoothness uh, terms. They will be weighted with something which is also derived from the image. So more long weights and less of the engineered weights that were uh, used uh, there before. Right, so, okay. So this is example, so this is, will be a, a correlation cost volumes of the feature descriptor, so it's a slice of that. And the um, contrast sensitive H, H cost that it, they should be low where the jump is allowed in the um, where the, 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 the there is likely to be a discontinuity in, in, in the depths, and uh, that would be solution in, 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 in the end. So let's look at this local matching costs at the. Um, CNN, uh, unary CNN part. So for each pixel here, we want. Um, to compare its descriptor to the descriptor in the right image, and the descriptors are built by, by CNNs. And then we calculate basically the Euclidean distance between these descriptors. It actually does not matter what kind of distance you pick here, because these are already long descriptors uh, with lots of degrees of freedom. It's the CNN is very flexible to build in them such that the distance that you pick he will be performing good if you train that. And actually, this kind of uh, 
architecture is it's kind of universal for all these dense matching methods for you can do optical flow you can apply not necessarily discrete optimization but uh, anything else uh, just uh, uh, so all, all the previous methods that were used uh, like engineering uh, comparison uh, uh, metrics they, they could use uh, some uh, deep uh, yeah, deep deep embedding. So if you know about this brightness constancy and, and everything derived from that. So this is like something like deep constancy if you like. Alright, so if you like these boxes that, that people draw for CNNs, I, I don't. I, I like to put CNN in the box. It's um, um, <laughs> input output. Uh, so this is the architecture. We have two images on the input. And there is the, it's called the CMS network. It's the same for the left image and for the right image, building the uh, features. And then on the top of that, there is this uh, correlation, the, the Euclidean distance that I mentioned. We actually, we also do that with um, uh, basically just this negative scalar product of the feature from here and the feature with offset from, from, from the Okay, and then the pairwise CNN is doing the following. It should extract the kind of edges in the image that will be used as uh, costs in the regularization. And uh, these edges, so if you do them manually by just computing gradients or something like that, they will have a lot of response on the texture things. But if you learn them, you will get uh, more, more strong response on real object boundaries where you may expect a discontinuity in the labels, so that, that helps also. Right, and this is the uh, conditional random field, this discrete optimization that you've seen already. And now, how do we train this in together, this uh, big architecture? So basically, you have uh, the ground truth, the labeling that you want on the output, and something that you can currently compute with uh, the pipeline. And uh, you have some loss function, let's say it's sum over pixels of um, uh, mismatches of these disparities. And you want to minimize this loss over the parameters of the network, but here the solution that we output is the minimizer of this discrete uh, energy in the conditional random field. So this is something that is called a bi-level optimization problem that you want to minimize the function where there is, there is a, a something which is itself is a minimizer of uh, another function that is an inner minimization problem here. So it's kind of a difficult uh, uh, problem to address. And it is in general hard to, me to differentiate minimizers, but in this case, especially, the minimizer is discrete. So uh, normally, if you vary the parameters just a little bit, this minimizer does not change. It means that the derivative in parameters of this minimizer is, is almost all the time zero. Um, so you need um, to relax this criterion a little bit to make it uh, smoothly vary when you change the parameters. And uh, this is not something we invented. There are no techniques for, for this. We will use margin rescaling structured support vector machine for, for addressing this problem. It is working as follows. This is what we want to achieve, that the ground truth solution has the lower cost than the any other solution, and maybe even uh, better than that by some margin that depends on the loss that you pay if you are answering incorrectly. And this is the picture. So this is, uh, let's say, this is our cost function, and um, it's. Uh, the value of the ground truth is uh, somewhere here. And um, so this red curve plots uh, like the value at the ground truth plus the, plus the margin. And then what you want is that all other solutions, all, all possible other costs would be above this margin. So it is not possible to find parameters that would satisfy all these constraints exactly at the same time. So what you want is to 
minimize the most violated constraint. So we will find among these constraints the one that um, uh, that has the largest uh, difference between this point, uh, between this red curve and, and the, the black curve, and uh, minimize that in the parameters. So uh, you can also verify that uh, uh, this. Uh, Okay, so that this difference is the upper bound on the true risk on the uh, uh, on the empirical risk on the loss that you pay when uh, you the ground truth is this and and we make the the decision. Okay, and so now this thing is something that it's a convex problem, and we can take a subgradient of that in the costs of the. Uh, uh, discrete optimization and those costs can be further differentiated uh, down to the CNN layer. So now taking uh, gradients uh, in the in the composition function. All right, so we can uh, we have now this uh, margin risk scale number bound on, on the loss that is differentiable, and we can back propagate that in the theta. And the gradient of this is given by by the following. We have to to solve this. Um, we have to solve for the current prediction, but with with also uh, offsets uh, in, encoded in, in. So the loss is encoded in, in additional costs for for matching. Anyhow, so you have to find the current prediction. More or less, and then from that you, you derive the gradient that can be propagated down. So this is how the training looks like. If you train them, uh, if you don't use the conditional random field, no regularization, so we switch all the pairwise terms to, to, to zero. So the, the training loss goes like this. And then when we activate the conditional random field and set the parameters, uh, uh, by 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 grid search, uh, there would be like a few parameters to, to tune. So you immediately get some improvement, and then when we train everything jointly, that there is still uh, more more improvement to to the full performance. Uh, all right, so these are some numbers. I will not stop on that, and they, they may be old already. Um, so just to illustrate. So this is the reconstruction what we get by matching the local windows only. So there is no uh, no 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 optimization involved. Now when we add the conditional random field, we get something like this, and when we train jointly, uh, we get something like this. So the error goes down, and you can see that if we use this seven layer networks for the features, we get uh, more accurate results in, in, in the. Also, this is some zoom in for these cups in here. So it's a CNN plus conditional runner field, and now jointly trained everything. Right, and. Uh, Okay, so I'm not the one who is doing all these experiments, but uh, guys say that uh, we are currently r r rank one on the residual means square error in the Middlebury benchmark, and it, so this is uh, some this number. And uh, unlike the competitive methods, we are not doing any post-processing, so it's just the uh, learned uh, descriptors and the optimization with, with learned parameters. But no, nothing of this, this cost aggregation, semi-global matching, uh, enhancement, median filter, bilateral filtering. So we, we, are, we are not doing the, these things that are they are not differentiable, so you should uh, that the people are tuning parameters of all this stuff kind of manually to get better results. Uh, okay, so more examples for the reconstruction on some more challenging uh, images. Uh, let's. Okay, so this also goes like. Um, let me see. So this is uh, C. Uh, CNN only, but now with CRF and, and now jointly trained. So in, 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 in these cases we see that the joint training also improves the results. <clears throat> right, so some... Okay, so this is the next test is for the car driving scenario. We, it also has a stereo camera on the car. 
and um, now it's not controlled laboratory environment but uh, this outdoor stuff um, okay and um, what I wanted to mention that if in the inner resinian there would be some part of the objects that are occluded for which there are no good matches is actually it's possible it's it's not modeled in in here so we still try to match all of them but of course this uh, local scene is very wrong there but when we have this combined model even without uh, explicitly modeling something around here it may correctly resolve uh, these secluded areas uh, all right so some few more examples on uh, reconstructing these uh, scenes So here is some kind of errors that our method makes. So it is precise to the object boundaries, unlike the, some the fully CNN-based methods that uh, blur in these objects. But it may have errors in these occlusions, and uh, we know a couple of other problems. So this is something. I'm out of time. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. So this is finishing okay. now already. Uh, you see we had the experiments. So this is something that is uh, easy to do also in our framework, but we did not include it yet. It's uh, called uh, sublabel enhancement. So typically we get these discrete solutions like this, but we can further uh, refine that uh, at very low cost to, to something uh, uh, a little bit better. That also uh, brings down the, uh, these errors in, in the tables. Okay, so this is one of practical applications that uh, people in Austria did. They are interested in um, quality control of the road pavements, and for that they had this special car that uh, scans the road, and because it uh, goes straight, you can view it as the uh, sort of the stereo camera because it makes the picture sequentially while, while just uh, displacing. And they wanted to make inspection of the road. For that, they wanted to reconstruct, uh, okay, so what is the profile of that? And uh, so this is some reconstruction that if you do the pixel-wise with engineered uh, descriptors, so this is something that you can do with CNN descriptors. And this is uh, with the uh, optimization. And that one is the fully trained uh, model with the CNN and the CRF. And uh, so there will be some reconstructions also that you can render from that. Right, so, okay, I'll have a little bit more of the mass, but um, maybe we don't have time for that. You have, maybe. Four, you have four minutes, so feel free. No, it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to warm up your appetite a little bit. So this is something we, it's in the development, we want to put in the model the occlusions. So here you see in the color, it is a handcrafted model in MATLAB, no, nothing learned, but it can resolve the occlusions pretty well. So if we plan to put this in the joint learning framework and see that how, they, how much the results could be improved from that. So, uh, okay, this I can say just, like basically a few words, I, I, I will not explain all this, but there is, uh, so you can see in the literature many different kinds of uh, loss functions that people use for training, uh, matching the different descriptors, and you can see the hinge loss that coming from the structure support vector machines, or okay, coming from this SVM res margin rescaling, you can see the, um, basically maximizing the probability of the softmax model. You can see the cross entropy or the um, also something called triplet loss. And my point here is that this, all these losses are very much related. They are nearly the same by uh, looking at the minimum here is uh, something, the minimum function in the hinge losses is, is something like a, so its smooth version known as the log sum exp is something that occurs in the logarithm of probability of the softmax. So it's actually basically this one is a smooth version of this. Um, 
Oh, okay, so this one is a smooth version of this, and this one is exactly the algorithm of the softmax. And uh, this is exactly the cross entropy if you use. Uh, so if you ground truth, you just have uh, one, so kind of, it, it, it only activates one bin. You can also write it as Calder versions. And you can see that it's related to the triplet loss because uh, so triplet is kind of two pairs. So a pair of uh, answer and uh, positive and a pair of answer and negative. And you, if you look for the hard negative, the one that, that um, violates the constraints the most, you, you are getting back again something like this, something like the SVM margin rescaling. Okay, so the, 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 that would be all now, really. So <laughs> I, I welcome you for the questions, and the best question receives a book, yeah, right? Yeah. Thank you very much to Alexander for his talk. <laughs> I think it's a nice, nice start for to understand. Who have questions? Okay, we will be first. First, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, this uh, beautiful presentation. I, I learned. Ah, okay. So, uh, first of all, thank you for a beautiful presentation. It was really interesting. But uh, uh, as for every stereo uh, rec uh, reconstruction algorithm, uh, one uh, main question arises: What is about stereo confidence in your met method? So, how confident is uh, the? How confident are you with those uh, stereo labels for disparity? I'm asking because I'm also practicing in stereo reconstructions, and uh, I see a lot of uh, artifacts uh, that uh, appears in outdoor uh, environment, for example. Uh, the main problem in this domain for automotive, for example, devices is the sky segmentation because uh, um, all false positives uh, can appear right there and it can confuse the self-driving car, for example. So uh, how do you work with the confidences and uh, what is the solution? What can you propose for solving those kinds of problems? Thank you. Okay, okay, very good question. I, I, I like this because uh, I think we, we need that for, for building reliable systems to for building the uh, so for building something that can be used for f uh, for the training of this of the same system to, to know where the errors are and we don't have that yet but we are looking to do something like that maybe uh, also with a neural network that would predict where this thing makes errors so because actually predicting where, where something makes errors is a little bit simpler problem than uh, calculating the, the solution. Uh, I think that is also something uh, that is working in this uh, uh, generative adversarial networks. There would be a network that tells how bad is the current, uh, currently generated answer. And that, that is typically learned uh, easier than the thing that produces the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Second question. Okay. Oh, please show slide with cup. Right. Image. Cup. Mm. Cup. No. Mm. You have. Ah, yes, yes. This. Uh, I. I can see shadow near the cup. Uh, if, that one. If it's depth, it's like hole on the wall. It's mistake or it's okay. Uh. Right, I think so. Here it's a different uh, depth than the, the wall. Yes, so it's a little bit further. So it's kind of mistake, but uh -huh. okay. it. Um, okay. uh, yes. So if it is, it is not as big mistake as if you are predicting the noise in in front. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And second question: uh, What labels do you use in your convolutional neural network label ground truth? Oh, I see. Okay, let me just first uh, say something more about this. Um, so you see, so when you have a very low texture, for example, white background, it is up to the regularizer or up to interpretation and the prior what to, what what should be put back there. So the, this shadow, yes, it is an artifact, but it's just uh, okay. So some kind of for possible reconstruction in the lack of data. Uh, so what was the labels in the ground truth? Yeah, so we use the, uh, uh, so we use the 
data sets that have the per pixel ground rules with the disparity labels. The, these are this Middlebury, but it's just like five images in stereo. Uh, in, in this uh, Kiri data set, there are more. And actually, for stereo, you can quite find quite a lot of data sets with the ground truth available. It is not so for the optical flow problem because that, that is, it seems to be much harder to, to measure precisely directly. Yeah, they have a stereo stereo pairs. Yeah, they had a time of flight or something to, to measure. No, they had LIDAR in, in this still, in, in the Kiri. Okay, thank you. One more question, because we have just uh, three questions. Okay. Thank you. How does your algorithm determine the difference between the two images and the difference between the two may be important. In other words, one image picks up something the other doesn't. For example, a child behind a pole that one image picks up and the other does not. How does your algorithm determine oh, the differences because the AI can only work on the images or the information it gets? So how does it determine based on your images? Well, uh, you see, okay, I'll try to <laughs> answer because you, you, you're asking something very general. Um, I'll try to answer something that I possibly could. So this model is very simple, right? It's just uh, you saying, okay, it should match visually, locally, plus there is some regularization that the, the surfaces uh, should be piecewise smooth or something like this. There, there is no, nothing much uh, of uh, that uh, what you are maybe having in mind that it should uh, uh, have notion of the objects, that something goes beyond something. There, there is nothing of this kind here yet, but may, maybe it, it needs to be in a good understanding system, but it's far beyond uh, our capabilities currently. Okay, who is the best? All right, I, I'd like to give the book to the uh, First, was that uh, error estimation question. Okay, thank you very much for, for good questions. And uh, <laughs> Alexander, you can you can take another book for you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And and your laptop. And thank you, thank you very much to Alexander.